l'activité de SPIC. Yesterday in the 16th final, he rode uh, the time of 10.563, the second fastest qualifier. And you can see the tactics of the sprint race here. It's very hard to control two other riders. So, uh, Nee Wonder, I think, has spoken to Charlie Wash about this and they've decided that the safest place to get through these early rounds is to ride it from the front. So Gary Nee Wonder from Chauves of Belgium. There's the bell lap. Nee Wonder will probably stay low on the track and it won't give either of the riders a chance to take any height on him. He's riding beautifully. Actually, he's just getting that rider on his hip. And I think as they go to the back straight, Nee Wonder will be happy to keep the Belgian right next to him and use his acceleration. Although he's got himself into a bit of trouble here. Yes, the Belgian has headed ahead. Gary Nee Wonder on the inside, low on the track, trying to force his way through. Gary Nee Wonder's got the pace, but he's the Belgian. And look at her hard and flying on the outside. This is, it looks as though the Belgian goes through to the quarterfinal. Now that's Gary Newon's biggest problem. He just uh, hasn't quite got the tactical nuance of some of the more experienced riders, especially the Frenchman beat him home this morning. He was a second man home. Newon the third. And the Frenchman goes away now, and Newon has got some work to do. So Colas is away, and he's gone a long way out. There's 330 metres to go, and Newon is giving him seven lengths. They'll get to the flying 200, and now Newon starts to accelerate. Colas flat out. Newon looks a heavy. Within a length, within a half a length, draws alongside him. He'll have a look at him, I reckon. Knows he's got him, tucks himself under the arm. Smooth, 11.57, Gary Nee won through. The four-times world champion, Olympic champion from 1980, from East Germany against his West German opponent, Frank Weber. The sprint is on, and it's Hesslick in the front of the moment, the pressure coming from Weber. But I think you'll see the class and the power of Lutz Hesslick powering away from the West German as they come into the straight. It's a determined effort by the West German, but it's East Germany in the first 10.60. That's so he, performed, he performed well then, and uh, he's performing well today. Well, he's been enjoying this 27 degrees and 40% humidity at 25 past 5 in the afternoon here in Seoul. And there's a move from Eric uh, Eric Schoves from Belgium. He's held uh, Eddie uh, up on the track. He's caught him unawares and taken a couple of lengths out of him before they start the 200 metre sprint, but Eddie's moving well up the top. Alexander from Great Britain trailing at the moment. Those legs are really pumping up the back straight. It shapes that goes lower on the track and it'll be Alexander trying to get on his outside. This is going to be a great battle, but I think it's going to be Shoves. But look at the challenge coming for the Great Britain boy. Gee, that was close. Yeah, I think it was Shoves on the inside. I think uh, Eddie was caught napping there. With the wind through the rapid charge over the Japanese rider Miwa in the time of 11.31. Here's the bell. Yeah, Max Cheesman's taking the advantage there. He just slipped under uh, Andakovsky's guard, but uh, Zikovsky's got a lot more speed than uh, Max Cheesman. I don't think they've got too much trouble with him at all. Well, Kovsky's gone higher on the track. Tremendous power and speed down that back straight, but uh, to his credit, Cheesman is hanging on there. But I think you'll find that the Soviet rider will power away down the straight. Cheesman's showing great determination. He's trying to hold in there, but look at the strength and the determination of the Russian. 11-7-7, winning the... And then Gary just comes home up the straight. Here, although the, bend, the bends are very tight, he uh, and makes it hard to get around. If he can use those revs to come up the straight, I think you'll find that uh, Suster will have a, a very hard task on his hand to keep, hands to keep Niwon from uh, getting him up the straight. But it'll be a very close one. Suster did low on the track and then came up to take that high position again. Now it's his turn to look over the shoulder, keeping an eye on the Australian, who's virtually hugging that fence on the top of the top of the back straight. Yeah, you see Suster, he's very, very smart rider and very skillful. This is a very steep bank here, and he's seen Gary Newon ride for the last three years at international level, and he knows what Gary Newon's best strengths are. He knows the way Newon likes to ride, and Newon's got about five lengths on him, eight, maybe about ten yards there, and he's actually taken the advantage, and he's off. He's off for the early sprint, the bell lap, the final uh, lap of this velodrome. Gary Newon took the initiative. Can he hold on? Can the strength hold? It's the... Czechoslovakian making up great ground on him though. Niwan, look at him move. It's the Czechoslovakian Suster still trailing Gary Niwan around the bend and into the straight. Can the Australian hold on? He's flying for the line. The Czechoslovakian's coming. Well, Niwan's just got it, I think, from the Czechoslovakian. He, that was a great... Yeah, was... Russia is yet to strike gold in this event, but the East Germans did in 1980, and it was through that... Uh, man that's riding for them tonight and in the front of your picture there Heslick is forcing the Russian now into a balance and you might explain Rick as you did earlier in the week about how far they can move that back wheel it's uh, actually only a couple of centimeters and go that, that they can go back or else they'll be forced to uh, go to the front but actually the Russian led against the fence which in itself is not legal so he would have been forced to move on by the commissar anyway well now they go into the balance once again high on that track 38 degrees 
but they're now down to about that uh, 10 degree thing as Hesley caught him napping. He caught the rush and napping and streets away. I don't think that rush can make up ground here as the world champion goes steaming around the back straight. He's going to win this easily. This will be interesting to see. He's got, he's got a lead of about uh, 50 metres as they head down the uh, front straight to the line. I'd just love to see what time Lutz Hesley can record for a final 200 metres when he's got uh, when he's travelled 600 right from uh, the second lap. Well, a flying start this will be. It'll be interesting to watch what the time is. No, actually, they've uh, given it away. Russell didn't even try, and Hesley just rolls through, and that's just a race that's won totally on tactics. He, in the end, didn't, didn't even have to sprint to the line. Hey, Gary looks like he's just going to ride this from the front. Uh, he's got to get down towards the middle of the track now to make sure that Eddie doesn't get too much height. And if Eddie goes up high, as he's done, he's going to he can hold him there as long as he likes. Eddie should have had more distance than that if he's going to have any hope. Down the track goes Gary Newon trying to catch the British champion napping, but uh, Alexander comes at him again. He's got great finishing power, Eddie Alexander. They come sweeping around that last turn. They'll come down to the straight, but has Eddie Alexander run his race? Newon powering away down the straight. I think he's too strong, and that's a bronze medal to Third and one point. Lutz Heswick of East Germany. Heswick, of course, as I mentioned, four times the world champion, twice the runner-up, and the Olympic champion in 1980. Bell lap for the first round of the men's sprint for 1988. Up on the high on the top of the track, Neewon hoping that uh, he can just lead him in a very short sprint. Heslick sitting behind, taking it very easily. Neewon down the bottom of the track. He's got to get his revs to the highest revolutions he can because Heslick can make up an amazing amount of ground, as you'll see here right now. Right on the final turn. Now the sprint is on between Neewon in the inside. Heslick really powering on the outside. And Heslick goes to take the first round at the time of 11.12, averaging just over 64 kilometres an hour. It's going to figure. On. And... Uh, that's possibly what he'd be trying to do. He just takes a pretty smart operator. He's keeping a very close eye on Gary Newand, who's still very high on the track. They start to increase the tempo now as they swing down into that back straight. And it's Hesley of East Germany in front of Gary Newand, who really is throwing down the gorge at the moment. They come down low on the track, and it's still Hesley in front of Gary Newand. Into the straight now. Can Gary Newan keep his hopes alive for gold or silver? But I don't think he will. It's Hesley that goes through to the final. And it a metre sprint. The competitors play a game of cat and mouse, inviting each other to take the lead before the manic sprint to the finish. In the final, it's East Germany's Lotz Hesslisch, who edges past Nikolai Kovsch of the Soviet Union to win. Ik laat zich nu kennelijk toch verrassen, maar nu gaan we zien hoe snel.